So Ms. Fukumoto, Robin Fukumoto, uh, let me know when you think we should start. I, we've got quite a few coming in. Great, sounds good. Um, maybe we'll just give it um, a couple of seconds and then we can get started. I'll wait for my cue from you. Okay, <laughs> perfect. All right. Okay, well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have you and, and really excited to, to kick off the last activity of the Festival of Ideas. I'm going to hand it over to Mark um, to do a quick introduction before we dive deeper into what we're doing today. Thank you very much, Robin. So my name is Mark Lockridge, and I'm serving as the first director for the Case Accelerator for Student Entrepreneurship. And so that's um, a center at Punahou School that was started by the Case family. And uh, it was such a thrill for me to get to meet uh, Mr. and Mrs. Steve and Jean Case, uh, the benefactors. And after a first meeting with uh, Steve and Jean, uh, Steve emailed me to say, you've got to meet you need to connect with uh, this great alumna who is ha, uh, started a, a reef safe sunscreen uh, business. And he put us in touch, saw what Lonnie and Kai was doing. And I was like, wow, I, we, we need to help support and, and see what we can do. And, and um, had the great pleasure to meet Robin and now meeting uh, her co-founder, Sam. Great to see you. Uh, and we had a chance to brainstorm and uh, Robin, um, was open to doing a workshop like this, and she's collaborating. It, she, she and her uh, business partner, Sam, are collaborating with another uh, fellow entrepreneur here in the islands. And uh, I I'm just want to say these are wonderful people. I'm so excited for this workshop, and I'm going to help man the chat from this point. So please take it away. Perfect. Well, Mark, thank you so much for the incredibly kind introduction as always. Um, Mark has been the brain power behind this whole festival of ideas. So if you've had an excellent time, as I imagine you all have, a um, big round of applause to Mark for that. So thanks, Mark, so much for having us. Oh, there's a whole team that made it happen. Uh, it's just been <laughs> great to work with lots of awesome people. Thank you, though, Robin. <laughs> Um, well, everyone, I, I'm so, like I said earlier, I'm so excited to have you here. Um, so we're closing out the Festival of Ideas in the Sustainability Day. And today we're doing an Invent Your Own Resafe Sunscreen Workshop. And so when Mark approached us, um, we're really excited to collaborate with Punahou. I'm, I'm an alumni from the class of 2005. Um, as Mark mentioned, I'm here with my co-founder, Sam, and our amazing product collaborator, Moani. Um, you're gonna hear from them in a second as we introduce ourselves, but wanted to go through um, what we're gonna be doing today in the workshop. We're gonna do a quick background on ourselves, on the sunscreen and how we came to be as entrepreneurs. And then we're gonna focus in on this rapid sprint um, that go takes us through product development. And so how do you go into market? How do you develop a product? What are some of the things that you're thinking about as, um, as you're thinking and formulating and trying to experiment with different ideas? Ideas. The second part of this is going to be, well, how do you pitch whatever you created? So now that you have the what, what, what is the why? Why are you doing this? Who are you targeting? Um, how are you sharing your idea amongst investors and just normal people that want to hear about your startup? And so um, we have a really great session for you today. If you bought the kits, um, please have them available. I know I'm very excited with <laughs> with everything that I have. Um, but if you haven't, stick around. We're still going to have really great conversation. Okay. And so with that, let me hand it off to Milani to give her introduction. Hi, I'm Milani. So I've partnered with Robin and her co-founder, Sam, um, to do this sprint with you guys. Um, a little bit about me and my background. I've worked in Hawaii I'm born and raised in Hawaii. Um, I worked in the conservation field for about 10 years now, specifically um, with native Hawaiian plants. So I got to learn a lot about them and their uses um, for our bodies and just for the environmental sustainability in Hawaii. Um, I got my aesthetics license because I wanted to create all natural skincare but I wanted to, to have a focus on creating awareness of native Hawaiian plants and other botanicals in everyday life. Cause I felt like 
people, it, there just wasn't a lot of accessibility, especially with the focus on the native Hawaiian plant parts and working in the native Hawaiian plant industry, I kind of really realized that people really don't know what a native plant is. You know, they see like a tropical flower and they think it's native to Hawaii just because it's tropical. So a part of my mission is to educate and outreach to people about what is actually native Hawaiian versus other great botanicals that are out there and great for our well-being, our spirit, our body, and, and our skin, kind of like a holistic take on everything. Well, thanks so much, Moani. You um, you educate me every single time we, we chat. So I'm, <laughs> I know you're a wealth of knowledge, and I'm so excited for everyone to learn from you today. OK, and so with that, um, let me hand it over to Sam, who's going to take us through a bit of our backstory with Lani and Kai. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sam, one of the co-founders of Lani and Kai. And Robin and I actually met um, at our day job at Boston Consulting Group Digital Ventures. Um, and we're both former entrepreneurs, and we have always been talking about ideas with each other. So we're naturally just brainstorming a lot of ideas. Um, what happened was we, we both were really passionate about the sunscreen space. We both got sunburnt quite a bit, um, but we also realized that there are quite a few problem areas in the space and we weren't happy with the products that we were using. And so we just started brainstorming off of that. Um, we actually ended up taking a surf camp together to brainstorm this idea more. So over 10 days, we actually kickstarted the business in 2019 and really did everything from uh, market research to finding suppliers for packaging, brainstorming names, and basically our launch strategy, and really just kicking off our product and commitment to work together in 2019. And, and the rest is history. Um, Robin ended up moving home to Hawaii. She was in LA. And because of COVID, she had the opportunity to move back to Hawaii. And it was the perfect place to really launch our business. Um, one big thing that happened was the chemical sunscreen ban happened this January, which made a really big opportunity for us. Um, and, and we just saw that there was a big opportunity to really educate around the, the mineral market. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. Thanks so much, Sam. I think one of the things that I've been so grateful for has just been the massive support that Punahou has, has given me. So as an uh, alum for, for far too many years out, than I like to admit, um, coming back home and reconnecting with the alumni community has just been so, so fantastic. And so um, right now, I think um, we're, we're excited to see where, um, where our business goes. So as Sam mentioned, we had a couple of challenges that we were taking on. Um, one of them was the business challenge. How are we going to break into an industry that has pretty established players? And, and as a mineral sunscreen, um, this also brings to mind um, the people challenge. How do we get people to use mineral sunscreen over chemical sunscreen when it's slightly different than what they're used to? Um, the third challenge that we had was the sustainability challenge. And this is, I think, one of the interesting things about all sustainability brands. You're not just thinking about what's Best for the business, what's best for my audience, but then also how can I think about the, the earth, the society, the planet, and make sure that that's included in the way that we think about our product ethos. And so um, for our message, um, one of the things that we were trying to do is just make sure that we we had a product that did no harm. Um, and as we did more and more research into the space, we realized that there's a lot of harm being done. Um, so to give you a, a very quick background as to what's going on with the reefs right now, um, as the temperatures start to rise with global warming, our oceans are actually heating up. And the difference between uh, even a single degree of increase in our oceans means that our marine life gets really stressed. And so what happens when the oceans get stressed is the coral releases um, the symbiotic relationship that they have with these microorganisms that allow them to breathe. And um, this is called coral bleaching. And so this is probably a term that you guys have heard of. Um, what we didn't know is that coral can actually survive a bleaching event. They can come back to life um, even after dealing with this much amounts of stress. That said, chemical sunscreen is a killer of coral. So when it's at its weakness, um, when it's at its weakest, chemical sunscreen into an ocean can really make sure that a, a coral cannot regenerate and will never come back to life. The scary stat is that one drop of chemical sunscreen in 6.5 Olympic sized swimming pools is enough to kill coral. And so if you can imagine how much sunscreen is going into our water, um, hint, look to the left. Um, 
every year 6,000 tons is actually going into our oceans. And so you can imagine how stressed the coral are. Not only are they dealing with global warming, but then now they're also dealing with chemicals in, in sunscreen. And why does this matter? Um, well, the majority of our oxygen actually comes from the oceans. Um, a lot of people didn't know this. In fact, I didn't know this before I was doing this research. So it's actually very scary that we're losing our coral and we're losing the basis of all of our marine life. Um, not only that, we realize that sunscreen is such a wasteful commodity category with a lot of room for innovation. And so if you think about your big bulky sunscreen bottles that are, are not filled to the top, all of this plastic is something that's not recyclable because it, it contains the oil that, that doesn't allow it to go through a recycling plant. And so it's contributing to global warming, it's killing off the coral. And then the last thing that, <laughs> if you needed a last thing, it's really terrible for humans. Um, what we realize is that chemical sunscreen works by going into your bloodstream and, and kind of changing things in your system. Um, when, when studies were done with people that use chemical sunscreens, um, the residual amount of that chemical actually existed in their bloodstream far longer than anyone would anticipate. And so um, kind of a scary thought. So with that, um, we created Lani and Kai to, to kind of um, solve all of these pain points in market. Okay, so I'm going to hand it back over to Sam to talk about our product development. Um, she is um, by training a product manager, and so she knows the importance of product in, in any type of innovation. Yeah, thanks, Robin. So just before we hand it over to the workshop, I think it's just important to start thinking about how you actually come up with these ideas. And, and one thing, um, and by training, we learn this a lot at our jobs. Um, and, and as you start building companies, you start understanding that it's not really the end idea that matters. It's really the problem that you're tackling. And so instead of just thinking of the end idea and solution, which is really hard to get to, often it's um, way easier to actually come up with ideas if you tackle a particular problem area. Um, so for us, how we discovered this is obviously we had some internal insights of what what was wrong with the sunscreen market, but we went and talked to friends, family, coworkers, and surveyed anyone that would really talk to us about their current sunscreen products they were using, what they loved about it, what they hated about it, um, and what were big problems for them. And so for us, that was a really good insight to understand you know, for us, we saw that people didn't really know the difference between mineral and chemical sunscreen. And those of the people that did know about mineral, they thought it was thick, um, hard to use. And so we realized that there's a big opportunity just on education. And then we also realized a lot of people just really hated traveling with sunscreen. They always forgot it. So how do we make that easier? So those were some areas where we really just started discovering the problem areas in the space. And we weren't um, locked to a solution. We really had to work with the people that we wanted to sell with to, to create that. Um, so that's one big area that I think is important before you start jumping into potential solutions for this is like what problems do you want to tackle um, and also I guess to add on to that is who are you going to focus on so Lonnie and Kai initially like our target market has changed as we start to learn more and as people start to use our product we realize like um, there's a specific user that's perfect for it so it's great to keep in mind who your first adopters are and I think that will just help you really just try and differentiate and, and create a unique product um, by focusing on the user. So those are just some key things to think about as you go into this workshop. Um, Robin, Wani, anything to add to that before we, we pass it over to the workshop? No, perfect. <laughs> Yeah, no, and so um, what's what's really exciting today is we're going to be innovating on an existing product, so you don't have to go out there and create the formula and source the products and everything like that, but you can take this formula and say, you know what good market this could be for, it could be for this person that's looking for this, and um, with that, let me hand it over to Moani, who's going to lead us through how we're going to innovate our product. Thanks, Robin. Um... Thanks, Sam. That was a super big insight onto all the work, mental work that goes behind every single product that's out there. <laughs> um, so if you did purchase a kit, you should have your sunscreen, the base from Lani and Kai. You should have um, three essential oils, uh, lavender, peppermint, and olena, which is turmeric. And then you should have three, um, three pigments, the cocoa powder, the yellow mica powder and your blue mica powder and a pair of gloves and um, some wood mixing sticks. 
Um, so what my recommendation is, um, if you kind of have a few ideas kind of floating in around in your head, I mean, sketching them down is a really good place to start. But once you're kind of ready to, to test your ideas out, <laughs> you, can, um, you can get your base. Um, I, and then I recommend if you, you have like little tiny glass jars or even like a plastic jar or even like an aluminum jar, shot glasses work really nice if, if any of you have those laying around. Um, just to make kind of like little tiny micro batches when you're testing it. So, you know, you can take a little bit of the sunscreen, put it into your container. And then whatever, if you want to add a pigment, if you want to test, you know, maybe what, what all three, what do all three make or, you know, in, in the sense like that, you can start mixing them in tiny little micro batches to give you a, an idea of what your final product might be. And then when it comes to your aromas, um, if you're kind of teetering on which ones you want to use, opening your bottle and putting it about, about a shock of length away from your nose and sniffing it um, is a good way to test out to see how strong it might be. And even when you're um, looking to combine scents, having one bottle and then having another bottle farther away, it's kind of a, um, it's like a cheat way to see if they, if they match, if the scents go together, if you want to use like a s'more Olena, then you do lavender, you can hold the lavender further away and hold the Olena closer to you. So you're kind of getting a rough estimate of what your potential end product might be like and if you wanna go that route or not. Um, and then while you're doing scents and aromas, if you have uh, some coffee beans or something around to kind of refresh your senses, it's really good to do that in between your steps just so our senses kind of get overloaded and you actually can't smell as efficiently so if you just need to take a break then take a break and then kind of go back to it later if you don't have any coffee grounds or something strong to kind of mix your your sniffer up in between um but that kind of covers like the basis of the how to. And then just for a note for the peppermints, when you're doing peppermint aromas, um, peppermint is considered a hot oil. Um, when, so just be mindful, you know, if you're thinking people are gonna be using this as a facial sunscreen, you know, like you don't wanna use too much of the peppermint because it can potentially, um, the fumes from the oils can affect your eyes just because it is a hot oil. Um, so that's the only word of caution. And then when you're mixing your mica powders too, uh, just recommended to do it outside. <laughs> Sorry, that's my son grabbing my camera. <laughs> um, you might wanna mix outside because it can get a little dusty or you might even want to just wear your face mask over it while you're mixing um, so you don't have to breathe it in. Um, but those are the only only recommendations. Otherwise, really like the sky's the sky is the limit, whether you want to make a tinted sunscreen, a shimmer sunscreen, uh, I don't know, a chocolate peppermint <laughs> sunscreen. <laughs> There's just so many possibilities and ways and combinations that could go through. Do you guys have anything else to add, Robin or Sam? Oh, I think that that's great. I'm I'm so excited. These are all new new concepts to me. So let me um let me hit to the next slide. Um, so Moani, I think that these are just your instructions, but probably written out. What we're thinking is that we'll give, um, we'll give everyone about 30 minutes to be mixing your formula. And then in the meantime, we can have like a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a coffee chat over here um, between the, the three to four of us, um, just, just chatting about um, entrepreneurship and our products. Perfect then. And then I just wanted to add something else along with um, with the oils and stuff too, or even like the, the cocoa powder, or even like you're looking at what's in your the current base of the sunscreen, like kind of getting to the root of like what those ingredients do. You know, what does what does 
lavender or peppermint or olena do for you like spiritually energy wise you know it's more than just like a colorant it's more it can go it can go deep <laughs> into like what you're trying to get out of your product. So like Sam says, when you're thinking about your problem that you want to solve, you know, all these components go into like, kind of like your why, your story behind the, your end product of what you're trying to solve. Okay, amazing. So everyone who has um, who has their boxes, feel free to get started. And then in the meantime, um, we'll just have a little, <laughs> we'll just have a little side chat here. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat, and um, we'll answer we'll answer anything as as your time goes by. So Robin, would you prefer that people put questions in the chat or is it okay for people to turn oh, on their mics and yeah, uh, turn just your mic, shout it out as well? Talk out loud. Okay, yeah. great. Well, so one impression that I have is that there, there's such a nice variety of ingredients to play with that it, it seems like uh, everybody can specialize in a different type of sunscreen that appeals to a different type of customer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's such a good point, Mark. I think, as Sam was mentioning, a lot of the time you want to think about the problem that you're solving for first and then build around that audience. Um, I I spent um, a number of years in marketing, and, and that's really all we did. Um, we focused on our, our customer. We figured out who the best person is and what we're trying to solve for them, and then we created our product. And so as you're, um, as you're mixing all of these things together, um, like Moani said, um, what would a, an audience that would appreciate turmeric um, be looking for? What about someone that would appreciate peppermint? Um, what about all these different combinations, and, and how did they come together? So I'm trying to think of uh, like customer personas, right? That's sort of a thing that uh, a business will do where you have in mind a very specific type of customer. And then you, and, and it, when you build that, you get a sense of what their likes and dislikes might be and that can help shape the choices you make, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have in mind, if I'm uh, just to, you know, chat, I have in mind like um, a busy harried mom whose kids are climbing around. I don't know, <laughs> maybe, maybe like Moani. <laughs> and, and so the sort of the sunscreen that she might want might be sort of a calming, soothing aroma. And so I would go heavy with the uh, lavender uh, for, for someone like that. Whereas if I was looking to make something for, um, like maybe her daughter might want to be more like a mermaid and shimmer. And so I might go more with the, uh, the shimmering um, earth friendly glitter that you've included mm -hmm. there. And yeah, an no, they, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. These are all, these are all such fantastic ideas. I, <laughs> I love the dynamic and how fast you can put them together. What's um, what's really interesting is Sam. When we we're first creating Lonnie and Kai, we were, we thought we were creating it for athletes. Do you want to chat a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so we like I said, our our customer target market is really evolving as we start learning who the product really resonates with. Our first guest was really athletes. So I'm a marathon runner, and one big problem that I have is waterproof sunscreens or sunscreens that claim to be sports sunscreens, a lot of them are chemical. So I always felt like I'm sweating and it's not the healthiest thing to put on me. But the big thing is I kept getting burnt, even though I was using this waterproof sunscreen, uh, marathon training, you tend to go for really long runs and halfway through the run, I would be burnt, but the bottles were so bulky that I didn't really want to carry it around. So First, I didn't like the formulas that I was putting on myself. They didn't work. They weren't waterproof. And then the bottle, it just wasn't something that I could carry around with me on a run. And it just wasn't easy to transport. So I think those are some of the things that really fueled some of our early thinking. Um, we've seen that uh, making our product transferable through or transportable through our soft pack is something that actually resonates really well with moms. They can throw it in their beach bag or diaper bag. Um, and can take it on the go. And that's something we didn't really realize initially. It's not just athletes that this actually resonates with. So it's something that we've really been evolving um, as we learn what, what and, and our, your first guess isn't always right. Athletes definitely like our product, but moms like it more. 
I'm Milani, you have um, you have such an amazing product line yourself. What went into the decisions that you're making when you're thinking about putting a product together? So when I'm making a product, I really think, first of all, like, I mean, I'm thinking of my problem, like what I'm solving, <laughs> what issue I'm solving, and then a lot of thought and and the whole process goes into choosing my ingredients that I'm using. I'm really conscious about the purpose of the ingredient. What, what is that purpose doing? Is it just to stabilize the product or is it, you know, is it, is it benefiting my mental, my spiritual and my like physical health, which I'm kind of, more a fan of hitting all three points. So I try not to put in in ingredients that are just filler ingredients or serving just a single purpose ingredient. Um, I'm pretty intentional about choosing certain plants. And then because I am, I'm focused on creating awareness of native Hawaiian botanicals, all of our products have at least two or more native Hawaiian plants in them because that, that was a mission of mine. I wanted to educate people as to what is native, you know, what do we have here? Is it something that you can even find in the wild anymore? And, you know, yeah, my grandma talked about this, um, this plant that we used and now we, but we, you know, you can't find it or maybe you found it and see it, but you don't know how to use it. So, I, w I wanted to create that kind of education point to talk about for people to open conversation about what's what it is or where it grows, how you can use it. Um, and even even if it's native to other parts of the world too, um, just kind of going into the, I guess your scientific side as to what's endemic or what's, what's endangered. Um, so. I, I put a lot of thought as to the ingredients that I really choose to use because I I want it to be all natural and I want it to be something that, you know, even my little 10 month old son <laughs> can use. And I, I can testify that as a mom, I, I do love your guys' sunscreen. <laughs> and it's knowing that it's like it's safe and mineral based too. <laughs> but. So I, I wanted, when I was originally creating stuff, I made it for myself while I was pregnant because, you know, a lot of things come into question, like what's safe to use or what can you use? And even though something's natural, doesn't mean it's safe at, you know, certain levels. Um, Bob, and I'm so seeing some great questions in the chat. Um, yeah, it might be a good time to and I'm wondering, do we do we want to keep the slide up or do we want to like see everyone's faces if uh, oh, yeah, folks we can want to um, turn on cameras and sort yeah, of perfect. take a community moment to share stuff up to them. But uh, I, so there's a student from a, a, a reef activist group. Nene, I don't know if you want to pipe up or share your camera, but I, I love the question that you posed. Um, so I'll, uh, oh, I see here. Yes. So the um, question is, she has a student group that is aiming to produce their own fully reef safe sunscreen. They've gotten some tips on what ingredients to use and not use. So the question she's posing is, what do you think would be the best way to go about creating a formula for a mineral sunscreen? I think you guys are pretty expert at that. Sam, do you want to start and then I can I can sure. go after? Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, and you should definitely try and create it. Um, so there's a couple things. Um, so the big thing is if you're focusing on a mineral-based sunscreen, technically to be reef safe, you just have to avoid um, the two ingredients that are banned right now. But we believe that you have to actually look at a bigger view and, and look at eliminating all the chemical ingredients. Um, so that's one thing to have a stance on. If it is mineral, um, really there's just two ingredients um, right now that can be used in the US. 
Um, so it's titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So those are the two ingredients that you need to look um, that will have the SPF ability. There are other ingredients that um, other, like um, there's properties in beets that you might wanna look at. There's different um, pr products that are not yet approved that have been approved in other markets. So you might wanna look there if you're looking for something more natural. Um, so that's something to look into. Um, but um, big things that you need to be considering is what will be approved by the FDA. Since sunscreen is considered a drug, um, it actually needs FDA approval um, to actually be sold in most places. Um, technically, you can mix up your own sunscreen on your own and use it, but it will be really hard to sell without the FDA approval. Um, so that's one big thing that you need to consider. Um, a big thing that I would do if I was first starting out and what we did when we were first starting out is we actually just looked at the ingredient list of all the mineral sunscreens out there and just started to really understand what was in it and why it was used. I have a Google sheet where I looked at every single ingredient and just saw what what was why it was being used, what it did in the formula, and it just helps you understand what you need to start thinking about for your own formula. Um, so those are some tips that I would say where to start for this, but I'm really excited about your project and definitely keep us in the loop. We, we could definitely help a little bit. So there's some great uh, additional comments in the chat uh, and we'll get to all of those, but love what Audrey said, um, considering uh, you get a carabiner clip on the sunscreen pouch or Audrey, you, you please share. Yeah, look what she's got for you. Oh, nice. That's no, fantastic. I, yeah. Oh, go ahead. A, oh, no, it just what a great idea. We, we were thinking about that. We we're like, oh, you know what would be so great is if we could have a carabiner clip and then in retailers, we can just have it hanging and then people can can get it into their um, into their packs and just hang it off the side. So absolutely. What's um, what's hard and and but but also fantastic about product is there's always so many ideas sam and i always have to edit ourselves back because we're like you know what we should do next and i'm going up to milani being like you know what milani and she's like please don't do that i don't think that's a great idea so yeah it's um it's a lot of editing but i, I love that one i think we definitely want to look into it especially for our athlete market so along those lines robin and sam i came from um a Bishop Museum installation that was uh, put together by another Punahou grad, um, Kahi, uh, Ka uh, I forget his last name, but it's called the air station. So he takes plastic out of the ocean and he melts it down and injects it into molds and he's got a carabiner mold. And so I was able to pick up a, um, a reclaimed from the ocean plastic carabiner from him. So, you know, if if it becomes uh, something that uh, makes sense for your product line, uh, that could be an interesting angle, too. I love that. That's such a good idea. And then just to answer the question about um, mixing and how long it lasts after mixing, um, if you cover your mixture and keep it in like an airtight container, whether you somehow put it back into the Lani and Kai pouch or you have your own separate bottle you want to put it in, it should last um, as long as the sunscreen should last. But um, if you leave it uncovered, it will dry out. So you might want to just um, mix when you're going to use it. And then I, I noticed too with um, some of the with the cocoa powders and stuff, um, dip, if you're not going to add in any um, essential oil, it might be um, it might dry out a little bit faster just because you're kind of taking away um, what what liquid, what moisture is in the current formula because you're changing the base a little bit by adding in some of these powders and, um, and essential oils. I'm using different regions of my body to create different, uh, <laughs> different types. It's, it's fun. I really think you should do a peppermint line for athletes and oh a lavender for uh, harried parents <laughs> <laughs> on different at different times a day. I'd want different ones. I know I'm with you. I peppermint was our was our dream from the beginning. Um, and so I'm I'm so glad that we have Milani to come back to it. 
Um, just answering the question here from M. Shay, do I use the sunscreen that came with our kit or our own sunscreen? Yeah, you use the sunscreen that came with the kit. Um, we have a slight smell to us right now, um, but when Moani tested it with the with the new scents, you can scent right over them. So Moani, when I mix the organic Olena with the um, lavender, it's, it feels like it's uh, calming and yet uh, Pick, uh, pick me up kind of a thing. What, what are some of the properties of these aromas? So um, as we, a lot of us must know, probably lavender is the kind of keystone figurehead for keeping it calm. <laughs> so it does. So the lavender does bring an overall calming sense when you're thinking in terms of aromatherapy, which is the therapeutic benefits of any type of aroma. Um, lavender definitely holds the more calming, deep kind of relaxation mood. And while Olena, um, for your skin, it offers very good anti-inflammatory benefits along as, as well, you can even use it internally as well um, for inflammation and for certain digestion issues. Um, but it also is on the aroma side, it is a more energizing, uh, a more energizing oil. And Olena is actually native to Hawaii. It's a, it is a um, endemic, indigenous uh, plant. So it's native to Hawaii, but it's also native to other parts of the world too. So I just mixed up a uh, uh the I put some of the sunscreen on part of my arm and then I put on the uh, lavender and the olena and it is a magical mix I mean I, I, I keep wanting to sniff my arm <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> in front of everybody it's really compelling I've never it's great and when you're mixing to the Olena is naturally, uh, it is kind of on the orangey yellow side too. So you might even want to, you could even test with that and play with it as an aroma plus a pigment as well. Naturally, um, or traditionally Hawaiians used Olena as a dye. That's, yeah, that's great. I just created a Smurf. <laughs> I created a Smurf line. Good for Punahou football games when they come back in season. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, uh, so I'm sorry, I'm sort of a think out loud guy. You just gave me a thought for, um, you could do with the different colors, um, events where people are out in the sun uh, and they're cheering their favorite teams, right? Blue and gold. That's kind of a theme I see here with, uh, but that could be something else where you get your sunscreen and your, um, your rooting for your team. That's a different market. Absolutely. I think that that's such a good idea. I was so excited with Moani's um, different powders. I, I didn't realize that you could create an organic way to, <laughs> to turn blue. <laughs> Smurfs are organic, aren't they? Very organic, very of the land. I think we have to screen grab that moment. That was a classic <laughs> moment. With <laughs> <It's a> Smurf. <laughs> okay. It's, it's um, some of oh, I'm sorry. One of my oh, no. other favorite things was seeing some of the families when they had their cameras on with the kids experimenting. Uh, I'd love to see more of that. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, Moani, I see a question in here for you in the chat. Once you finish making the sunscreen, where do you store it? So as long as it's in uh, an airtight container, um, I don't know if anybody has like little tiny like cosmetic bottles lying around, empty ones that you can wash out and put your creation in. Or if you don't, you know, a Ziploc bag works just as well. <laughs> or if you can somehow get it back into the Lani and Kai bag too, that would work out. That would work out really well too. But when in doubt, Ziploc bag is, is <laughs> fill it up. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so how's everybody coming right now? Do we need more time? Are we wrapping up this exercise? Okay. 
I'm going to take the silence for busyness. So maybe we'll give you guys one more minute um, to finish this exercise and then we'll head into the next part. I'm really excited to see what everybody came up with. And, and I, I probably should get a, a trademark on my <laughs> on my very blue hand right now. <laughs> Moani, please tell us it's not permanent, right? No, it is not permanent. And for all you parents out there that have kids trying it out right now, it does not stain your bathtub either. <laughs> oh, thought of everything. <laughs> yes. I so think the, it, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead, Mom. Uh, I do, I'm just sharing out loud again. Uh, the uh, bronze look with the uh, cocoa powder appeal, that's like unstoppable. Like if you're, <laughs> if, it was, if it was a younger me, I'd be like, yeah, time <laughs> to hit the beaches of Greece or something. When Moani was talking about the Ziploc bags for storing it, it reminded me of our early days, um, actually testing out packaging. Um, so we had the idea for a soft pack from baby food. And so Robin actually emptied and bought um, a bunch of baby food and filled up the baby food with sunscreen, our favorite, one of our sunscreen brands that we were testing and, and looking at. Um, and she actually got a little like funnel and filled it up. Um, so that was one way we tested out soft packaging early days. So there's little things you can do to experiment if you think there's an opportunity there. And that's one thing we did um, to see if sunscreen could work in a soft pouch. Yeah, that's I noticed. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead, Mark. Uh, Kari Ogami from the chat had the same thought on the golden cocoa, make a great bronzer. I, I, I think you guys have an extended product line. We should be talking about uh, revenue share for <laughs> in some of the inventors in your inventor program here. So true. This is a great, I just put it, I, I created a new one and yeah, that, that one looks great. Uh, but Sam, you a question about um, using essential oils. So you can, um, Use them in a diffuser. If you have a diffuser, uh, you can use it by your bedside. Uh, you can put it on, um, if you have any carrier oils like coconut oil, sunflower seed oil, jojoba oil, pretty much any type of oil that you wanna use and mix it with some essential oils to get the benefits of those essential oils, whether it's lavender and you wanna come down. Um, peppermint is actually re really good for sore muscles too. You can kind of use it like icy hot um, or the Olena too. It's, you know, if you have some digestion issues, you can put it on your stomach along with the carrier oil and go in a clockwise direction. So that you make sure you're rubbing it in um, with the direction of how your digestion goes. Or even on, you can put them on the bottoms of your feet, along your spine, but just make sure you're always diluting the essential oils with a carrier oil. Okay, perfect. So it looks like um, maybe everyone's wrapping at the moment. What I would love to do is just to take us into the next piece of the workshop. Is there any really exciting ones that, that anyone wants to share with us before we get to their next section? Oh, here comes Mark again. I, just building on what Moani said, that um, it, you, you could have a kit where you use different oils for different parts of your body, where there might be different um, enhancements you want, you know, to calm this region and um, oh. repair another. Yeah, I think people would be into that. Yeah, that's such a good idea. A masseuse, a, a masseuse who wants to you know, use, the, it has such a nice texture, uh, you know, it could be like part of the therapy before you go out from your um, hotel massage out into the beach, you know, just work it into mm -hmm. the routine. And that's a yeah. great way to spread the word marketing wise. Perfect. I love, <laughs> Mark, you're hired. <laughs> Um, if, if you don't know Mark, he is the most fantastic ideas guy that I know. Every time I talk to him, I'm like writing, writing, writing. I have, have very long sheets of paper after our conversation. Okay, I, um, I'll take us back into the presentation. Oh, I see one in here. We have a blue warrior paint sunscreen. Great for 11 year old boys. Amazing. And um, there's another question around how many applications we can get out of our 50 gram pouch. Sam, do you want to take that one? 
Yeah, so mineral sunscreen, because it's um, quite a bit different from chemical sunscreen, you actually need only a T or like a pea size amount for a face application. Um, so I think you can get about, you know, 10 to 15 uses. It just depends on where you use it. Um, I find that most people use it for their shoulder region, neck, face, um, and sometimes arms. Like I use it full body for a run. Um, so it just depends on how much of your body you're covering, obviously, but really for your face, you only need a pea size amount compared to um, the chemical sunscreens, which actually have lubricants in them, which cause you to actually use a lot more. So you'll see a big difference. Um, so one pouch actually lasts quite a bit of time. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to um, I'm going to move us along now and then talk through our, our second part of this session. So now that we've created a product, um, hopefully with any of the any of the different sunscreens that you've experimented, you have something that um, that you're excited to work with. Um, we want to take you through what it means to go through pitch development. And so being able to pitch anything is always really important, especially in our world. Um, the reason for this is you want to tell people about about what your what your sunscreen is, what your message is, why you created it and um, the purpose for for it being um, that said, you don't want to spend an hour walking them through the minute details of things that they don't care about. So um, how how do we get through a pitch and, and what are the most important things that we think about? Okay, so in a second, we're going to share out with everyone here um, a pitch template, which gives you um, some tips and tricks as to how we're going to be thinking about this. So the next part of the session is going to be for everyone to create their own pitch for whatever sunscreen that you created. Um, there is going to be two slides included in this. Um, the first one is going to be the problem slide. So as Sam mentioned earlier, it's really important to think about a problem statement when you're developing any new product or idea. What's the reason why? Why um, your your invention is is in being? Um, for us, we talked about the need for an athlete like Sam to be able to take a sunscreen on the go and not feel like she was constantly putting chemicals in her body. So she was frustrated with the current bottles. Um, it's too bulky for her. She wants something that's portable and clean in a single product that doesn't exist. Um, then you get to the solution side. And this is um, where you would break down the ideas behind what goes into your product. So you have the product name, name your product. You can name it whatever, something fun. Um, here's where you would talk about what your solution is. So what's your elevator pitch? You wanna keep this short and sweet to the point around one to, to three sentences. Um, then you wanna think about the core use case for your product. How and where will people use it? Um, Mark gave the example of football games for maybe this one. Um, that's a, a really fantastic one. How does it solve the user's problem? So in Sam's example, as a runner, now she can put this in her pocket or her sports bra. She's going on a run. She can reapply on the go and she doesn't have to worry about getting burnt. And then the last one is really important for you to think about um, in the context of everything else that's out there. So why you and why now? What do you uniquely bring? Um, how are you differentiated? Um, inevitably, there's always competitors out there. So what is it that we bring to the sunscreen market that someone like a Neutrogena doesn't bring? How are we different from them? Aside from um, our packaging and our squeezable pack, what makes our mineral formula um, better, more clean, et cetera. And so I think that um, Sam gave you some hints as to what we were thinking about, but would love for you to think about these through your individual solutions. Um, we can give you some tips and tricks, but I would love to open it up to Moani, Sam, and Mark. Um, it, any advice here, any thoughts that you would be thinking about it as you're going through this exercise? Yeah, I can just add um, one thing that Robin highlighted at the end is just the, the practicing. Um, I didn't realize this until I really got to my job, but pr everyone at our work, we practice our pitches all the time. Um, Robin's an expert pitcher and, and she just told me I practice a lot. And I think that's something that I didn't really realize. I thought it just started becoming natural for people, but really practicing has become a really important part of my job. And also just pitching Lonnie and Kai, the more we practice, the better it is when we talk to investors or potential retailers. Um, so yeah, that's like one big thing that I wanted to highlight. 
Yeah, that's a that's a really good one. I um I know that it's scary at first when you think, oh, I have to go up there and it's like Shark Tank and everyone is gonna be so mean. But honestly, it's like a band-aid. You just rip it off the first time, and after that, everything is just gravy. Um, the first time you get yelled at by a VC, um, then you are you're <laughs> inoculated from that, and then you can get yelled at a VC all the times after that. So um, I, I want to spend time here in case anyone has any questions on what to do next, what to think about for your pitch. Um, so I'll, I'll open the floor. Feel free to unmute and just ask. You can put it in the chat if you like. I guess some other things to add is what Robin and I have found is that the story is really important. So just people understanding why we're close to this problem. So a lot of times I'll talk about me going on the run and actually getting sunburnt halfway through. Um, or I'll talk about, um, you know, I used to work at a private equity company and I actually learned that chemical sunscreen ingredients were way cheaper, but they were creating these crazy margins. So the more you can tell stories that, that people can relate to and see that you're really attached to the potential solution, people start to get invested in your story. Um, so I think that's one area um, to think about is just like, how can I make more people interested in this and, and tell them about a unique experience that I've had? Yeah, and I, I think something else as we're developing products that comes to mind is a lot of the time you think, oh, I'm going to make my target audience everyone, and that way I'm going to have the biggest possible market size, and then investors are just going to be knocking at my door. Um, one of the things that you actually want to do is you want to hone in on, on who your actual audience is, and this helps people to understand, oh, this is who you built it for. This is uh, this is an experience that Sam had as a marathon runner, not I'm building this for everyone of all ages that have all kinds of different activities and hobbies. I just have a question. So when you're thinking or when everybody's thinking about a pitch or like their elevator pitch, what would you say is the most crucial part of just like just going for the short elevator pitch? Is it more your background story or the who, why, what, where? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Maybe I'll I'll kick off and then Sam, you can you can add to it. I think um, what's most essential for your elevator pitch is they understand what the solution is, and so just make sure that that part is is apparently clear. And then um, beyond that, you want to tell the story of why you created the solution. So if you're saying I created a problem that I'm now solving for on this side, here's my solution, here's what it is, and make sure that you're talking about how this solves the user's problem. So when I was talking about this, if I were um, talking about our original product that Sam would take on her runs, I would say this is a sunscreen for runners. It does X, Y, and Z, it's portable, it's this. Yeah, it, it all depends on how much time you have. And you'll find that you need to have different pitches for different things. So if you are just explaining it in 30 seconds, you just focus on the solution. But if you have five minutes, you really want to focus on what the problem was, who the user is. Um, so those are some things to think about. It's just like, how much time do you have and who's your audience? And then can you guys answer that? There's a question in the chat about where they can purchase a Lani and Kai sunscreen right now. Love that question. <laughs> Um, so right now, Lonnie and Kai is available online. It's also available at all local motion stores. Um, we're in both of the Lawson's locations at the Sheraton Waikiki and the Moana Surfrider. Um, we're in a lot of the boutique stores as well. There's a store in Haleiwa called Number 808. Um, we just got into a store called At Dawn um, at the Ward Center. So, so really growing now. I'm really, really excited to see what happens next. Yeah, and our website's lonnieandkai.com, um, spelled out A-N-D, and, and um, our Instagram's Lonnie and Kai Sun. So yeah, that's where you can get us. Do you offer a subscription service? Like I'm the kind of guy who just wants to like purchase once and then just have it arrive, you know, at the frequency I need. Curious. Yeah, we were kicking around that idea for a while and honestly we just need to pull the trigger on it i we were trying to validate it out before we put it out there but i think we should just do it um that's it's such a great idea mark i i think it's it's something that we we really need to look into and i would love mixing in a different aroma each time you know <laughs> so collect all the the aromas but i have a question so robin for the pitches uh, uh maybe i was trying to do too many things at once um now 
So we've learned the art of making the pitch. And so now uh, how does each group at home um, start to build their pitch and share it back? Yeah, so we, um, let me just hit the next slide. So these are just the, the slides broken out. Okay, so what we wanted to do for this one is just to have everyone individually create your pitch sheet. So everyone at home, we're gonna send a link out in the chat and then you can take this Google doc, please make a copy of it and then create your own presentation. Um, Sam, would you mind sending that out in the chat to everyone? Oh, sorry, you're muted. I sent it out, yeah. Oh, okay, sweet. Great, so yeah. So one second. I oh. just sent it to one person, wrong. Oh. <laughs> they get a head start. <laughs> <laughs> and go. Um, but yeah, so take this, um, use it for this workshop, but also use it um, when you're thinking about creating future ventures in the future. This is always a really good start to get to a basis point of what am I developing? Who am I developing for? And, and why does it exist? Um, so with that, you're off. Please feel free to just make a copy of this and then fill out your pitch sheet. Um, and then after this, what we want to do is um, we're going to help break everyone up into small groups so you can practice. If um, if you don't have a pitch and, and, and didn't have um, the box with you, you can stick around and, and we can chat more about um, pitch technique and, and what to be thinking about in the in the water chat. And I'd like to volunteer if anyone wants to private chat with me I'm always happy to brainstorm uh, on um, pitches and and so happy to throw around some ideas, I might ping people randomly to uh, on private chat to see who's thinking what. Perfect. So and uh, um, Robin we're going to do this for how long and then we come back and. Uh, yeah sort of so right share. now we're um, all of us will just be in this room for now for about 20 minutes. Um, this group seems to be quite fast so if if we're done sooner then great then we can push everyone out to the um, to the group rooms. There's a question. Um, on from Lorraine, do you have an unscented version of your sunscreen? We have fragrance sensitivities in our family. Um, so I, I'll, I'll just go quickly on this one. So we our vision was for an unscented version, um, but the natural ingredients actually ended up smelling a bit like popcorn. Um, so we actually are working to figure out if we can get an unscented version, um, but we focused on a really light scent. Um, with coconut extract. So that's really where we focused on just because it was the least um, allergenic one that we could launch. Um, but yes, it's definitely a focus of our future. Um, we just have to figure out how to get the popcorn smell. <laughs> Okay, while everyone is um, is busy working on their pitch sheets, I'll I'll stop sharing and maybe we can just have a conversation. And, and sorry for me being so dense all the time. I, I, I haven't got all the information in. <laughs> just trying to do different things. But are, are folks going to be going into the breakout rooms uh, as sort of teams on the fly to work on pitches oh, together? Yeah. So, so right now we have about 20 minutes that we've allocated for individual pitch time. And so you're going to be creating your pitch on your own. Right after that, um, people can go into the breakout rooms. And so when they go into the breakout rooms, they're going to be um pitching each other I exactly forget how that works okay yeah yeah so i can i can share my screen again and we can cheat forward a bit um so right now we're, we're just working on the individual pitch sheet on our own so everyone can have one and then um right after that we were going to do small breakout rooms where everyone can pitch practice so we'll do small groups and and in there you're going to share your your pitch with your group um you're going to consider your timing your your tone the key points that you want to hit and then um our group members are going to give us feedback on what felt compelling compelling if there's anything that you'd change or make better And great, is it sort of like March Madness from there? And so uh, the groups choose like who's gonna pitch to the next round or? Yeah, based after after the groups come back, we, um, we'd we love for people to just raise their hand um, via the chat and then just um, 
just come in an order and then we'll call you out and then you'll pitch. Um, we have allocated about um, 20 minutes and, and maybe a bit longer just based on how fast we're going right now for everyone to, to have some time to pitch in front of us. Um, this is a, a really fantastic skill to have and to build. And especially when you're in a safe space and it's um, people who already love your product. <laughs> So I, I'd really encourage you to, to step up and, and pitch. So there's a question in the chat on how to make a copy and um, the an easy way to do that of the to make a copy of the slide deck is when you're in the Google Slides, choose the file menu item and then under file you see make a copy and you have a choice of the entire presentation or selected slides so and then it makes a copy and you can rename it. We could demonstrate it if uh, that would help people, but. Yeah, happy to happy to demonstrate it if that would help. Yeah, maybe we demonstrate it. I think I think we have um, our template being used right now. Oh, great. Okay, great. Um, I can do it if you want me okay, to. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. You might want to make the template view only, and then yeah. that'll force everybody to. Ah, uh, got it. There's I'll a question it. for, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll share a new one, one sec. There's a question, I think, for Moani. What do you know about raspberry seed oil? My group was told this was a good thing to add to a sunscreen formula. Or maybe that's for, uh, maybe it's a question for Robin. Um, I think Mwani would be the expert here. Um, Mwani, I, I think you're still on mute. Oh, sorry, thanks. <laughs> um, so raspberry seed oil did, um, if Nane, if you can pop on, what was the reason why they told you it was good for sunscreen formula or they just told you it was a good thing? I'm not exactly sure why, like what the reasoning for it was. But um, one of the people we talked to said that it was a better alternative to for maybe it was just for scent, but I'm not super sure. When you were, um, did they say it was a better alternative to what for what? Just any kind of oil or? Because ra raspberry seed in general or even just the raspberry plant in general, it's it has it's a really good antioxidant. So I could see why it would be useful in a sunscreen just because of the high antioxidant content. So as if we're anybody is unfamiliar of what an antioxidant actually does. Um, so as we're out in the sun, the UV rays from the sun are causing damage to our body and it, and they, it comes into our body, it kind of breaks up our molecules. So we have a nice solid molecule, the rays kind of come in, it breaks off these molecules and now we have what is called like free radicals. And so it's going kind of crazy in your body. And then when you add antioxidants come in, they stabilize the free radicals. So it's not kind of bouncing around in your body anymore. It's, it's it's coming whole as a molecule again, which is the importance of an antioxidants and what it's doing in, in skincare line, especially as a physical application. Um, so, so there has been some minor research with, um, I know for, with the raspberry seed that it does help with SPF, but there is no, I guess, very solid proof if you know, like if you take just raspberry seed oil and you took it and got it um, SPF tested, it's gonna be relatively really low. When we're talking about skincare, you wanna look at a, a SPF that has a SPF of 30 or 35. That's kind of your optimal working range. Anything higher than that, you're getting a very low marginal percentage of increased protection. So. Uh, SPF 35 compared to an SPF 50 
maybe you're getting like a 0.5 increase of a percentage of protection, which is why a lot of sunscreens kind of focus around the 30 to 35 range when you're looking at an SPF. And as an alternative for alloy, um, I mean, there's a lot of alternatives that you could use instead of alloy. Um, so it kind of just really depends on the properties that you want from that plant. So like my recommendation to you would to actually do a little bit research diving a little bit deeper into what is the purpose of raspberry seed oil and it might help you bring light to why he was recommending that or maybe kind of going back you know like why are you looking for an alternative to alloy you know what what purpose was alloy serving was it a moisturizer was it a calming agent did you want a gel you know kind of going trying to figure out narrowing down like what your problem is or and what you want what you want that ingredient to um function as i hope that answered your question <laughs> I can share my screen just quickly. Just if, if anyone hasn't figured out the copy, um, I will show you. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Awesome. So basically with this, all you do is press file, make a copy and then entire presentation and you will have a new version. So you can just put your name. I okay, hope that helps if anyone hasn't figured it out. Well, Sam, I think someone on here is saying it's not giving them the option to make a copy. Oh, sorry, you're still on mute. Awesome. Let me just make, uh, change the settings. We could also just make some copies for people and invite them to it if you like. So let me see if I have this right, Robin. So I've made a copy of the deck and I am sort of taking the slide three example, I think it was, I've actually added more now. Um, the two example slides, and then I'm just modifying those to be my pitch. And I'm going to swap out a different face for the customer that I'm uh, profiling, right? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. And so in my presentation deck, I can delete the other slides in my Absolutely, copy. Yes. Yeah. And then just have those two slides, the one of um, the, uh, the 30 seconds for the person who's frustrated has the problem and then another 30 seconds for the product name, the use case and all that, right? Exactly, yes. Great. How's it coming everyone? Is, is, are there any questions out there? Anything that, that feels challenging? Oh, so Rosanna, what we're um, what we're pitching right now is is Sam sent out um, different copies of of our pitch pack. Um, if you had a chance to to buy the um, the box, we've been mixing our sunscreen with different types of scents and different types of powders, and now we're um, we're creating a pitch for for whatever product that was created. So if you don't have the box, that's totally fine. Um, you can you can feel free to to think about um, what product you would have mixed up and then um, enter in your pitch that way.
Okay, great. I'm going to give us um, a couple more minutes to, to finish up here. I know we're, we're going a bit faster, um, but it seems like this group is, is accelerating um, really quickly, which is fantastic. And then we can get into um, the small breakouts where we do pitch practice. And then finally, um, we'll get into our pitch session. I'm really excited to hear what you guys have come up with and, and how you're thinking about pitching it. Sam, what, what's the worst pit situation that you've ever found yourself in? Um, I think just when I'm unprepared um, and have to talk about something in like, um, like very technical, I think is really hard when you're not prepared well. So I think those have been my worst um, presentations. Um, and then I think just like when you're pitching a topic that someone doesn't care about. So um you know like to a male vc that might not understand the the sunscreen market it's always tough uh how about you robin oh yeah i've, I've had many i think um when i was first Actually, um, this is a this is a really funny story. In high school, I decided to join um, the speech and debate team because I just hated public speaking and I couldn't do it, but I knew it was a skill that I wanted to have. And I went years just like losing every single debate that I ever was a part of. <laughs> And then eventually I, I got to a point where when VCs would yell at me, I would just be like, you know what? <laughs> That's fine. How about you, Moani? Was there um, ever a pitch event that that you had that just felt difficult? Uh, your your story is taking me back to my high school uh, <laughs> debate class because <laughs> uh, we had a you know we had a product and we had to do like a presentation in front of everybody and you know just scared of public speaking in general. <laughs> And I know I had a problem of trying to speed, speed through my presentation, mm -hmm. even though like, I think our requirement time was like this five minute pitch, but I kept finishing really, really fast. And, <laughs> and I, even now, like looking back, like even now, like I still have that, that stage fright of talking in public and, trying to like rush through so I can be done but you know like you guys have said practice 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 <laughs> <laughs> because it definitely builds confidence the more the more I talk about it the more I I even like fiddle with stuff on my end whether it's like going over and making a sell sheet or talking to my friends about it my the products that I create like it does help to really narrow down like what what I'm doing and like my key points that like I should I should bring up versus going off and getting lost in my tangents. <laughs> <laughs> no all of those are, are really good. We got a question from Lorraine. Um, how did you find someone to manufacture your sunscreens and other products? So I'll answer for sunscreens. Moani, you can take it. I know you manufacture a lot of your own products. So um, for us, um, we did kind of our initial research um, for manufacturers. I had some experience with manufacturers. I worked for a private equity company that produced sunscreens like Neutrogena. Um, so I had some background on who could manufacture it, but they actually were all way too big for what we are looking to do. When you're doing a startup, you really don't want to invest a lot in your first run because um, you don't know if people are going to like it or not. So for us, it was really important to find someone that could do small batch sizes. So we needed to do less than 2000 units and that's really hard. So it really eliminated a lot of people that we could potentially work with. The other key things that we are looking for were people that could do natural ingredients. Um, so they had organic certifications and that they were basically looking for more premium ingredients instead of chemical ingredients. And so that really narrowed in on our focus. We had, we, we basically are still kind of looking at how we can um, kind of like switch this up, but that was kind of our big things that helped us pick a partner initially. Um, and Moani, you can answer for your products. I know that you do small batch sizes, so maybe you can talk a bit more about that. Yeah, so I actually manufacture all of my products myself. Um, so my biggest focus is find is sourcing uh, ingredients 
for my products to make everything. And I do run everything in small batches. Um, so just trying to really find, find, finding sources that provide like a, a good price, a good wholesale price, but kind of at a lower quantity, just because I do run everything in really small batches. Um, kind of, I'm a, I'm a one man show. So, <laughs> so, uh, so that's a little tough finding vendors and sourcing, um, smaller amounts, but at a good economical price is a little difficult. Um, I'm kind of always, always on the market of looking and seeing what to find. And, and I really believe that, that the earth that we live in, the, the grass, the trees, whatever ingredients that it's coming from, everything possesses like a type of spirit or mana and it's being passed on to us as, as we're using it. So I like to source things that are organic, wild harvested and raw. I like it to be as unprocessed as possible specifically for this reason. So fi sometimes finding wild harvested or even unprocessed ingredients is actually surprisingly kind of hard to find. And usually those ingredients are usually on the higher price side too, versus something that's been processed. That's a really good point. Uh, there's a question from Rosanna. Please ignore if you already covered this, but did you ever host focus groups to understand your audience needs? So um, Robin, do you wanna take this away? Yeah, sure. So. Um, because we're so small, I think we were aiming to do a lot more of this future looking. We did a bunch of research um, before we started on, on what people considered um, the, the kind of the tropes of mineral sunscreen versus chemical sunscreen, pricing research, ingredient research. And then as we go through, for everyone that, that purchases our product, we're really interested in, in knowing what, what people think about it. And so anytime that I give you a sunscreen, I'm always gonna come back and say, well, um, how, how did you like it? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? And we've been collecting just spreadsheets on the topics so we can figure out for our next runs, for our next build, what are we gonna do and, and how are we gonna improve things moving forward? forward. Yeah, so just to add to that, we we launched direct to consumer. So we are selling right to our end user. So it was really easy for us to actually get a hold of the people that bought it. One big disadvantage of retail is that you actually don't know who bought your product. Um, so selling direct to consumer was a really great way for us to launch just because we could learn from them. Um, we would send out feedback two weeks later, ask them to actually do a review for our website, but we also would um, put a type form link in there where it had some survey questions. So we could get an idea of price point, we could get an idea of the formula and then the packaging. So we would probe on specific areas. Um, that's like a big thing that we did um, at Christmas time, I personally emailed every single person um, and just tried to understand um, and see if they would fill out our, our feedback form. Not really scalable, and it took me a long time, but it's something that really helped us. And since we're small enough, it's something that you can do. Um, so that's like some big things that we've been doing. Um, we're going to be basically evolving our pack because of all of this feedback. Um, we'll likely evolve the formula too because of the feedback. So they're just it's, it's been really awesome. They're not traditional focus groups, I'd say, but um, we definitely um, integrate customer feedback all the time. Um, and so I think uh, Moani, um, not sure how you integrate feedback, but I'm sure with your small batches, that's something that you, you're you able to do. Yeah, so I kind of do the same thing. I, I reach out to customers that have used it. Um, and see what they say or if they had an issue with like my packaging even to see how I could improve on that. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, feed, feedback is critical and sometimes I'm so invested into the products that I make. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to like, to step away even from the product and see like, cause I love it so much. And I'm so passionately invested into it that sometimes it's it's hard for me to be like, okay, I can I'm getting this consistent feedback, but but I I like I just so love this purpose of it. So sometimes it's a little hard for me to actually like tweak a little bit just 
I think it would be better if I had a partner or something to be like, um, no, hello. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, so the feedback is really crucial and, and being able to be open to hear and to make adjustments. And, but, you know, I've also realized too, like I can't make everybody happy either. So really trying to like hear what people, what the feedback I am getting but kind of like choosing my avenues that I choose to take because I can't have a hundred percent satisfaction. Okay, before we before we get to more questions, um, would love for us to break out into the breakout rooms and and as I was saying before, um, would love for everyone to do a bit of pitch practice on their own um, within these groups. So, um, Mark, do you know if people will be automatically put into groups or do they need to to find groups on their own? I think that uh, um, I think they're, they're working on putting groups of, I think, at least six people in a room. Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. So, oh, is, is Steven doing that for you? Yeah. Or is, oh, wow. So, well done. Weston? Weston? Yes. Weston's no. the man. Yes, amazing. Thank you. Okay, great. So everyone, um, everyone will get their chance to be in a group to do some pitch practice. So I, I'd say um, just keep it light. Try your best, um, see what the feedback is, and then bring it back. And, and please do raise your hand to pitch. Um, so we're just taking five minutes, I guess, right? So we'll come back to a pitch. Yeah. So just just take a, a few minutes, and then um, and then we'll we'll come back to pitch. Okay. And I, I I think I'd enjoy hopping around to different groups if that's okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Maybe you guys want to do that too. <laughs> Okay, and then um, perfect. So then Lorraine has asked who manufactures sunscreen for you? Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, go, go, ahead. Ahead. Oh, oh. go ahead. So um, we were able to find um, as Sam mentioned before, we were able to find a, a really great partnership with um, a manufacturer that does um, all natural organic ingredients. Um, Sam is originally from Canada, and so we're, we're able to leverage some of her connections there to, to find our manufacturer. Um, eventually, we do want to bring it back to the States, um, especially in Hawaii. What, what we're having a bit of trouble, though, is finding a, a manufacturer here that can um, that can fit all of our needs and then do the volumes. Yeah. We, we actually might have to become the manufacturer, so it's just a, a basically a capital restriction that will, will stop us, but we think we can get there, um, but probably not in our first year of business. Okay, Weston, so Weston's have, ready to go. Um, so let's divide everyone up um, around five minutes or so, and then we'll come back to hear the final pitches. Perfect.
one is slowly, slowly coming back now. So maybe we'll just give it a second before we open the pitch floor. Oh, I think Luke's going to have a good one too. I can tell. Luke was awesome. Um, is I'm not sure that we had some trouble actually sharing the slides. Do um, all participants have the ability to share their screen? You know, I'm wondering if at this point we just do like a verbal pitch. Yeah, that's I think fine. We're short on time. Yeah, yeah. No, that works. Okay, but perfect. I'd love to see those if you guys uh, want to share them too or send them over later. Yeah, so or fun. you can send a link in the chat as well. Um, okay, so who's first? Um, does anyone want to volunteer? I know that Reina and Nami are awesome and they're ready okay. to go. They'll do Let's it. Go, Reina and Nami. Um, we decided to name our product Easy Breezy Sunscreen. And it's port it's easy to carry around to athletic games and activities. And it's easy to reapply when you're on breaks. So easy breezy sunscreen for active people. Is that right? For athletes. And and you've got that little carrying case. That's fantastic. So you can just put it in your pocket. Love it. Yeah. I love that. Yay. That's so good. That's awesome. Well Yay. done. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Who else? Sam, you said that you had someone in your group. Oh, yeah. Luke? Luke, are you ready to go? It's okay. We're, we're not going to share screen. Okay. Can you yeah, stop you can sharing? Just go. You can oh, share screen if you want. It's, it's okay. We tried earlier and it didn't work out. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Marcy and I'm a busy soccer mom. Aloha, I'm Luke and I'm a soccer player. My 10 year old son has sensitive skin and I worry about the chemical ingredients in his sunscreen. I need a sunscreen with natural ingredients that Luke will actually want to wear. Fun in the Sun is Lonnie and, Lonnie and Kai's exclusive boys line. Created with an organic mineral base, we've added a lavender smell to calm minds for peak performance. The perfect sun shield for a soccer or sporting event Luke and his teammates remain sun safe and on top of their game. Having fun in the sun while safe is what we love about Hawaii. With our product, we're keeping boys safe and moms happy. Yay, that was great. Oh my gosh, these pitches are so good. I'm so impressed. So screen share is enabled now. I think it was a setting that had to be changed and they kindly changed it for us. Uh, that sounds like you put a lot of thought into that. It's awesome. I'd love to, I guess there's a recording, so we'll be able to refer back to this, these great pitches. I love the easy breezy. That's such a memorable name. And then what a sophisticated pitch you guys just shared. I, yeah, I, as a parent, I had that same problem. How do you get the boys to um, put on sunscreen? I love that warrior one. Was that you guys or who's the, who's the warrior one? Anyone I mean, else? I, oh, yeah, please, okay. yeah, I think we're running low on time. So would love to. Yeah, anyone else want to share? Alex, you're going to go? Alex, Nanea, Hayashi? No, yeah, but you're having fun. You're enjoying it? Excellent. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you. Thank you everyone so much for, for joining us today. We really appreciated all your time here and, and to get the chance to share our story. Thank you for learning about our sunscreen and our reefs and um, please do keep in touch. I'm just going to pop this up here um, for a second. I know it's, it's quite small, but um, if you have any questions, if you ever are in the market for trying to develop a, a new product, um, please do feel free to reach out to Sam and myself at hello and Lani and Kai.com or Moani um, at, at her email address down there. Um, we're, we're always available to you. We're really excited and um, really appreciate again um, your commitment to the day.
That was super yeah. fun. Thank, Thank you, you for joining. Thanks, everyone. So great meeting everyone. Have fun in the sun. Now you have protection in style. Thanks, Reina. Thanks, Nami. You guys rock. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, Nanea. Bye. See you, Luke. Great job. Awesome pitch. Great job. Go for it. I'm going to hang for a moment if you guys want to. Sure. It sounds great. Is that Shelby of Punahou Outdoor, Shelby? Weston, we're going to hang for a moment, if that's okay. Lorraine, it's so great to have you in each of these workshops. Yay, such a good hey. spirit. Say, so my Thanks. daughter says that she had, that we ran into you and Chloe uh, once over at Vegan Hills, she thought a few years ago, was that? Oh yeah, that's why you're familiar. Yeah, I'm so sorry that that just, that's gone away. I know. We kind of had a good chat with you while we were eating. Yes, now, now I'm remembering. Yeah, we need to bring it back. I love that place. Yeah. You're not vegan, by the way, are you? Plant I am. I'm most days vegan. You're kidding. So am no. I. Yeah, that's and why I you look so healthy. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. you've got the right kind of sunscreen now. Or, uh, you know, if you <laughs> didn't get a kit, uh, I'll give you my email. I think you didn't get a kit, right, Lorraine? I can no, arrange. I really? Let me get one to you if you want. Oh, Here, I'm take nice. my email. Sure. Oh. Uh, Here it see. comes. There it is. Yep. And just email me and I'll follow up with you. Okay. Um, but gosh, I, I wanted to uh, take a moment, talk with all these founders and say <laughs> thank you so much. That was awesome. It was, you covered so much. <laughs> I love how all these kids are popping out from behind you. <laughs> Boy, that's great. There we are. I got the shot. Um, so I think it went really well. And I can tell, so I'm excited to be bringing, <laughs> look who's coming right at the camera. Um, I'm really excited to bring this to our summer school kids. We have 115 of them. And, uh, and as you can see, the, the kids are like, they, there's no fear. They just jump right in and they've got great name yeah. ideas and great product ideas. So this is going to be perfect for all of them. Oh my gosh. So yeah, no, that, that sounds so exciting. Um, but yeah, no, thanks so much for the opportunity, Mark. Um, this has been so great to get to know you and to work together on this and small piece of the festival. Thank you for putting all this together. I mean, you really put heart and soul into it, and and it's just wonderful. It would it be okay to use the? Uh, you've got the great templates and everything for our 115 kids. Of course, yeah. All yeah. right. And then hopefully we'll be able to share back with you like a whole slew of, of fun ideas. But I, I think, you know, the, the wisdom of the crowd, there's, there's already been some great ideas that can really inform what you do and Moani, what you do. Uh, and I think there's like an interesting hybrid with the, um, if you're getting sort of massage therapy mm -hmm. by the ocean, you know, a Maui or in Waikiki, and you just have the product line and customers of the, of that service can request, you know, do you want the invigorating or the calming? And then they've got uh, the massage oil instead of massage oil. It um, they can go out into the sun having had their their thorough massage. I don't know. Just thought. I love that. No, I I didn't think about a massage with sunscreen, but I love it. the The getting on the back is the hardest part. So that sounds like such a good <laughs> good opportunity. And it's a differentiated service for these uh, sort of high-end uh, resorts, and they're the yeah. ones that are going to be, you know, spending the money on um, on doing doing right by the planet with um, um, a great sunscreen like this. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably too specialized. No, no, no. I, lo I, think no, I it, love it. I think it has a multiplying effect. You know. If yeah. No, I, I honestly, I, I really like it. Um, to to get done with your massage and then just go out to the beach. That's perfect. That's yeah. <laughs> It's a dream come true. And I was thinking too, like for specialty events, like with um, sports. Uh, Weston, we don't mean to keep you too long. We can just close it out ourselves, right? If uh, if you're like off to your next thing. Weston? 
Uh, that's up to you. I'm, I left the recording going, but I can stop that and or let you stop it. Oh, yeah, I think we're we can keep rolling. Whatever, whatever you like, Robin and Sam and Wani. Don't have a preference. Uh, so I, I, I do think there's a, I, I was starting to work on a summer camp model where um, they, it's like sunny colors for summer camps or something, or, or, or it, it, just like the, the, the young girls were thinking too for um, sports teams. So sport color, mm-hmm. sport color sunscreens. Yeah. And so when you're playing, instead of like being shirts and skins or whatever, you could actually show a little spirit and you're putting on uh, sunscreen that's a color for, you know, Idea. one team versus the other team yeah. and then you can just rotate through da, 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 da. i don't know i think camps no, I love might... it. I, i'm surprised with how much pigment i was able to get in there um, <laughs> yeah, yeah you were blue <laughs> <laughs> pretty yeah. blue but yeah, i just I... Your color i, I would have liked to see you have some warrior paint on your face but you know <laughs> yeah Next and i just time. i think for summer camps, kids being able to decorate themselves and making it fun to put it on at the yeah. beginning of the day, like, uh, and just like parents in general, like I thought it was brilliant the way uh, one of the families were, were doing the blue warrior paint. So if little boys can think, oh, I'm super cool wearing this uh, blue warrior paint, then they're all about it because otherwise it's just like impossible to get them to slow down. Yeah. And then, you know, they're wearing it too. Yeah. You know, when it's right. time to apply. That's so clever. Yeah. You're so right. And I do think that like, um, if, if you, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're just have cursory interest or a deep abiding interest in uh, aromas, having that subscription service and being able to mix in different scents, it really does provide more engagement. Like I, I surprised myself with uh, that mix of the um, Olana with um, with lavender, That's sort of like That's a calm, really yeah, calm energy. It really worked. <laughs> That's, um, yeah, that's awesome. I, I love the scent. It's, it's really, really good. So I, I do want a, a subscription um, just to make it easy. I just want to buy like, you know, my six month supply or whatever. And I can just like easy fill out and then boom, there it is. Or if it just gets shipped, you know, whatever is a good frequency to keep, uh, keep them fresh or whatever. But I, I, sign me up for that. Yeah, I'm going to look for um, a Shopify app to see if we can be able to test that and just try yeah. and launch it. Uh, in Mana Up, is, it, uh, they, they've been doing a lot of different campaigns, surprise boxes, like you could do a surprise box type where it's a different um, store. Like I would, I think there's probably other consumers like me who would appreciate the stories of these uh, native species that, uh, you know, Moani's introduced us to. So I, I, I would appreciate having that kind of thing. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's like total upsell premium kind of thing and then um i just like the idea of surprise boxes in general where i'm learning a new fact each mm-hmm. time or i get like a uh uh so i'm a guy i'm not you know totally into skincare <laughs> but i do need i do sunscreen but if there's like something that you know each time you ship me something i get like a nice little surprise or for the family i think it keeps it going it creates that bond i like that yeah I, I think we're trying to think about repeat usage. And so this is, that was a, a really fantastic idea for that. Um, oh gosh, we didn't get to the card. Oh, um, shoot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did did everyone, did everyone get envelopes? Mine didn't come, I didn't have an envelope with mine. I think I had an extra, <laughs> that's why. Unless I think I kept... the ones that I gave you at Punahou where we didn't put the envelopes. In. Yeah, yeah, but it's great. People, people will know what to do, or you can like do a follow up email or something if you want. It's up to you. Um, but I, I, what a great kit! So I'm very excited for doing this in the summer. And so many, like, uh, we can totally. So we're gonna have them in person, and we can. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, if you guys want to come visit, uh, you can run it that way, or you can beam in. Um, but we have it's gonna be like four different sessions. I think we can combine them and we can make it like you can hit everybody in two sessions. I have to look at how the, how it all plays out, but I think it's going to do really well. How long are the sessions going to be? So the total sprint will be an hour and a half. Um, So, but each session with the kids is like, or it's an hour and 20 minutes. So it's like, what is that? uh, I got to look at my, um, 
I, I let, let's coordinate on that later. I'm like <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> We're still doing this event. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I'm keen to keep going with this. And it's summer after tonight. And so I will start working on the art. Yay, for this. I saw that's so great. Um, did you? Did anybody go to the augmented reality workshop? Did you guys miss that? Didn't have a chance because we. Uh, I went we to the first half. It was really awesome. Oh, okay. So you, you saw how the triggers can, um, you can use your. I don't know if you downloaded the app, but you can like see the sharks swimming. Yeah. No, that one is so cool. Right. So that's what I'm thinking for um, what we can do. Let the reef comes to life. I don't know if I think the shark. There he is. Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, he just went by, but like we could have him, you know, we could tell the story in an augmented yeah. reality way. Oh, I love it. The box. Yeah. Good. Well, we got other folks hanging in here. I, I, did you want to get a word in edgewise? I wonder if they left there, <laughs> they stayed connected and they wandered <laughs> off. <laughs> Possibly. Are there any other thoughts? Do we want to like close down? Yeah, I think we can close, but Mark, thank you so much again. This has been so fun. I'm, I'm so glad that we're able to do this. It was great. Nice. I feel great. I smell great. So I gotta <laughs> thank you guys for that. And it's so nice to meet you, Sam. Thanks for collaborating. Great meeting you. Thanks for having us. Thanks All right. Us. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Great session, as always. Nice to meet you, Sam. <laughs> Bye, Moani. Great meeting you. All right. So we'll keep doing sessions and we'll keep selling. We'll keep purchasing. Um, Lonnie and Kai and, and <laughs> every new generation will learn with it. Sounds great. Thanks. All so right. Much. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.